is what they call it. Yeah. And uh, look at their logo, and it doesn't even take any deciphering this one. There's a pyramid with an angel on top with a McDonald's-style M presiding over the pyramid. Mm. <clears throat> so essentially you've got more messianic imagery in the logo of a corporate symbol. Um, <laughs> you know, and all I can think is this company, Schweppes, they teamed up with Cadbury's, they're instrumental in destroying the health of the world because they create sugary drinks and, you know, aspartame ridden drinks and everything yeah. that goes with it. Sheesh. And they're using this symbology. <laughs> so <clears throat> you can look at that on my blog here again because uh, it's, all, it's all on there. Um, Very interesting. Get to Starbucks and uh, Starbucks, if you look at when you're walking past any old Starbucks, you'll notice that the logo is um, three stars that make a pyramid. And the very top star is seated on top of a crown, which is essentially, you know, symbolic of the all-seeing eye. But underneath the crown is a woman, and that woman is Isis, mm -hmm. so the Egyptian, the Egyptian deity Isis. Mm -hmm. And um, essentially, what I've realised over the past few days is that, that what these logos are depicting is some form of messianic event. Yeah. And. Um, when you look into a book, there's a book called The Secret Teachers of All Ages from 1928 by Manly P. Hall. Indeed. And it uh, states, Isis is sometimes shown standing between two great pillars of Freemasonry. Yeah. So deity Isis, Isis stands between these pillars. So on the McDonald's logo, where you've got the M and you've got the M co coinciding on the top of the pyramid, and the same on the Schweppes logo, where you've got the angel stood on top of the pyramid, they're representing Isis. <laughs> That's... There's no other way of looking at it, for, for, in my personal opinion. Yeah, yeah. So basically, ISIS is symbolic of the all-seeing eye. It's the same thing. Hmm. Um, same as when you're looking, for instance, into the Holy Trinity and stuff, and you've got the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. There's, the, there's the evidence of the kind of, you know, the ever-looming one who sees everything but isn't quite there. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? Yeah. So anyhow, this stuff, this occult symbolism... Um, it works on a dual level, you know, like optical illusions. For instance, you can now look at a picture and do you see the old woman or do you see the young woman? Yeah. If, and it's got it's got the duality, um, same as everything else when it comes down to religion. Yeah. Uh, most people are attuned to see one thing, but it actually means another thing as well. But it depends which version you want to go with. There's, mm. two, there's two ways to look at it. Mm. And my opinion on everything with the occult is that it's working on a different plane outside of the five sense human reality. Um, it's you know it's something that's working in the in the subconscious yeah and going on that principle of uh, mind before matter universe um, when you're looking at this occult symbolism and if one person is say looking at the Schweppes logo and they're drinking Schweppes and they're buying into this logo they're buying into the brand they're buying into all of it they think they're just buying into a great drink but they're also buying into this other thing they're buying into this messianic event and mm. essentially if you think about this mind before matter universe, mm. if this stuff, this occult symbology is working on the subconscious and it's working on the subconscious of a global population, then it's got the ability to still bring itself forward into matter. Do you know so what I mean? It's, so it's, it's what you're saying is that with the help of all these uh, uh, un, uh, you know, knowing people, uh, so to speak, this is yeah. propelled forward. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, for, for instance, like when someone goes to a McDonald's and yeah. they're buying into the mm, McDonald's, you know, how clever they got that anyhow. Right, right. But um, when, when they're going in and they're buying those McDonald's, they're also, you know, they're buying into the alternate, like the alternate thing, which is the symbol of, you know, this messianic event on top of a pyramid. Hmm. You know, it's, it's empowering it. It's, it's giving, it's you know, it's building it into the subconscious, and that subconscious can precipitate into matter at the right time. And, and that's interesting, considering that many of these companies are so, I mean, they're global players. I mean, some of these companies yeah. are have, have bigger, you know, a, a bigger economy and and uh, gain more money than than certain countries do. Well, you yeah, know? I mean, yeah, they, we've got no idea how they got success, so successful. I mean, you know, there's there's no reason for it to be honest, apart from that the. the there's something, something else there working with them. You know could, what I mean? do, do you also think that uh, you know potentially this could work the other way around, meaning that uh, human beings, uh, since we've been subjected to at least in the Western world, uh, uh, yeah. you know, almost 1,700 years of, of Christianity and so forth, that this 
the reason also why they might want to pick a logo like this or or uh, you know have this message in, in the logo is that on some level this speaks to to our unconscious so people who are inclined to uh, you know uh, lean towards the christian faith for instance are actually yeah. in some way kind of uh, lured in by these kinds of symbols and and consequently yeah. they I mean yeah yeah, definitely. I mean, the the thing that I'll draw upon later is that how this like this this works with more than just Christianity. Because if yeah. um, Isis has many identifications, and she's got an identification as the angel Gabriel and the All Seeing Eye and stuff. Yeah. But um, when we talk about this new world order and one world religion and the one world government, the angel Gabriel is the one figure that can unite Islam and Christianity because both of them are dear to her as God's messenger. Mm-hmm. So when you're looking at implementing this new world order, it's got to be something that combines these two religions. And that particular figure is that thing that can combine those religions. I get, I'll touch on that in a bit, anyhow. Yeah. Um, hmm. it's, uh, it, it gets deeper. It gets, I can even, I'll be, I'll, I'll be telling you all it is in a minute. <laughs> sure, sure. Go ahead, sir. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give, give it a bit of time. I'll give you another ten minutes. Sounds and I'll good. Let you know it is. <laughs> but anyhow, moving back, moving back to the Olympics logo yeah. and the Zion logo in the 2012 and mm, stuff. I basically, yeah. there's a little, a little bit of research. There's stuff on the net about this as well. Um, the person, the, well, the company who created that logo is a company called Wally Owens, and um, oh, sorry, Wolf Owens, is a brand agency, and uh, this brand agency was set up by a chap called Wally Owens, and this this man was responsible for branding corporate Europe. So basically, you know, GE Capital, all these logos that have kind of, you know, sunk into the sub- subconscious of sorts. These are all like created by this man called Wally Owens, hmm. um, who created the 2012 logo as well. And it turns out his dad was a Freemason. Nice. So the chances are that, you know, he, there's an interview online where he references his dad trying to get him to be a Freemason. He never actually says whether he is or not. Hmm. But the chances are it's in the family. And, you know, there's these messages in the logos that this man's produced. It's a Freemasonic branding, you know, company for corporate Europe. Yeah. Wow. Essentially. Really interesting. So, well, um, so, uh, uh, n- n- sorry, sorry. Yes, but yes, I wanted the, the name there, w- Wally Ollins, is that right? Wally Ollins. Right, yeah. thank you. Okay. W-A-L-L-Y-O-L-I-N-S. Perfect, thank you. Right, and so at this point, you know, you've got this um, you've got this connection to Freemasonry with the logo and stuff, and it moves much higher than Freemasonry. That's just like the um, the outside protection for this stuff. I basically loaded up, um, you know, Google Earth, wanted to have a look at the... Uh, I wanted to look at the London site from the air. I wanted to see, you know, what it is that's uh, so special about this place. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, for it just so happened that the particular site in Stratford was the only last bit of wasteland that was, um, you know, that was left vacant in London. It was the one last place that they could do things mm-hmm. um, for something like the Olympics. So, so you know, it's quite lucky that they, they had it in the first place. And what I noticed was I started looking at the actual street plan of this place. And um, to go through it, you've got you've got a number of roads that circle the site. And the first road is a road called the Eastern Cross Route. Hmm. Oh, sorry, the East Cross Route, which is a reference to the Eastern Cross. Hmm. Um, you know, the Eastern Cross is, is an Orthodox cross, and it's a modified version of the Patriarchal Cross. It's got two smaller cross beams across the side. Um, next road down, you've got Carpenter's Road, which encircles the site. <laughs> carpenter, who was a carpenter? Oh, good old Joseph. Yeah, he of was course. a carpenter, wasn't he? Yeah. Next road down, you've got a, co- a road called the Great Eastern Road. Mm. And obviously, when you refer to something as the Great Eastern, it's obviously like the Great Eastern Star. So you look into the Great Eastern Star. You turn, it turns out that the Order of the Eastern Star is the largest fraternal organization in the world that both men and women can join, yeah. and it was founded by um, someone highly connected with the Freemasons, and their symbol is the, um, it's the pentagram. Hmm. So this is the next road down. Yeah. Move, moving on uh, around the Olympic site, we're in, if you envisage we're encapsulating the whole Olympic site here, the next road along is Angel Lane, hmm. and obviously the famous angel is the Angel Gabriel. Hmm. So we've got Angel Lane here. Um, next road along, we've got Temple Mills Lane. Temple <laughs> Mills, where the water mills belong to the Knights Templar. Yeah. So another connection there. The, the Knights Templar were the poor fellow soldiers of Christ in the Temple of Solomon. <laughs> and then encapsulating all of this is um, Church Road. It's obviously another biblical road name. Yeah. So all the way around the Olympics 2012 site which you could call Zion, if you go with the logo, mm. is biblical road names surrounding the whole site. There's not one road name that's not biblical. <laughs> so you start looking at that and you think, 
what the hell is going on? Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this site was supposedly a fluke that they found this, and you know what we're looking at is something that is clearly quite well planned. Um, so if you move into like for instance, there's one road here that's called um, is the, the East Cross route is called the A12. Mm. It's another road name for it. And if I move into, say, for instance, hieroglyphics for a start, hieroglyphics back in the days of ancient Egypt, they were seen as talismans in that a particular hieroglyphic didn't mean like one letter, like a H. It meant a multitude of emotions. It meant a multitude of meanings. And it basically, you know, it drew in the powers of the stars. That's what a hieroglyph was. It was a talisman. Yeah. It wasn't a direct translation. So like, for instance, when they do a direct translation of the Rosette,